Foot Washing, Wikipedia Audio Mandi, or the washing of the feet, is a religious rite observed by various Christian denominations. The name is taken from the first few Latin words sung at the ceremony of the washing of the feet, Mandatum Novum Du Vobus Ut Delegatus in Visem Sicut Dilexi Vos, and from the Latin form of the commandment of Christ that we should imitate his loving humility in the washing of the feet. The term Mandatum, therefore, was applied to the rite of foot washing on this day of the Christian Holy Week called Monday Thursday. John 13 117 recounts Jesus' performance of this act. In verses 13 1417, he instructs his disciples. 14 If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. 15 For I have given you an example, that you should do as I have done to you. 16 Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. 17 If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Etymology Many denominations therefore observe the liturgical washing of the feet on Monday Thursday of Holy Week. Moreover, for some denominations, foot washing was an example, a pattern. Many groups throughout church history and many modern denominations have practiced foot washing as a church ordinance including Adventists, Anabaptists, Baptists, and Pentecostals. The origin of the word Monda has at least two possibilities. Entries such as Monda Thursday in the Catholic Encyclopedia. The root of this practice appears to be found in the hospitality customs of ancient civilizations, especially where sandals were the chief footwear. A host would provide water for guests to wash their feet provide a servant to wash the feet of the guests or even serve the guests by washing their feet. This is mentioned in several places in the Old Testament of the Bible, as well as other religious and historical documents. A typical Eastern host might bow, greet, and kiss his guest, then offer water to allow the guest to wash his feet or have servants do it. Though the wearing of sandals might necessitate washing the feet, the water was also offered as a courtesy even when shoes were worn. I Samuel 25,41 is the first biblical passage where an honored person offers to wash feet as a sign of humility. In John 12, Mary of Bethany anointed Jesus' feet presumably in gratitude for raising her brother Lazarus from the dead, and in preparation for his death and burial. The Bible records washing of the saints' feet being practiced by the primitive church in I Timothy 5.10 perhaps in reference to piety, submission, and slash or humility. There are several names for this practice, Mondi, foot washing, washing the saints' feet, pedilavium, and mandatum. Christian denominations that observe foot washing do so on the basis of the authoritative example and command of Jesus as found in the Gospel of John 13, 1:15. Jesus demonstrates the custom of the time when he comments on the lack of hospitality in one Pharisee's home by not providing water to wash his feet in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7, verse 44. The rite of foot washing finds its roots in scripture. Even after the death of the apostles or the end of the apostolic age, the practice was continued. It appears to have been practiced in the early centuries of post-apostolic Christianity, though the evidence is scant. For example, Tertullian mentions the practice in his De Corona but gives no details as to who practiced it or how it was practiced. It was practiced by the church at Milan, is mentioned by the Council of Elvira, and is even referenced by Augustine. 
Observance of foot washing at the time of baptism was maintained in Africa, Gaul, Germany, Milan, Northern Italy, and Ireland. Background According to the Mennonite Encyclopedia St. Benedict's rule for the Benedictine order prescribed hospitality feet washing in addition to a communal feet washing for humility, a statement confirmed by the Catholic Encyclopedia. It apparently was established in the Roman Church, though not in connection with baptism, by the 8th century. The Albigenses observed feet washing in connection with communion, and the Waldenses' custom was to wash the feet of visiting ministers. There is some evidence that it was observed by the early Hussites, and the practice was a meaningful part of the 16th century Radical Reformation. Foot washing was often rediscovered or restored by Protestants in revivals of religion in which the participants tried to recreate the faith and practice of the apostolic era which they had abandoned or lost. In Catholic Church, the ritual washing of feet is now associated with the Mass of the Lord's Supper, which celebrates in a special way the Last Supper of Jesus, before which he washed the feet of his twelve apostles. Evidence for the practice on this day goes back at least to the latter half of the 12th century, when the Pope washed the feet of twelve subdeacons after his Mass and of thirteen poor men after his dinner. From 1570 to 1955, the Roman Missal printed, after the text of the Holy Thursday Mass, a rite of washing of feet unconnected with the Mass. For many years Pius IX performed the foot washing in the Sala over the portico of St. Peter's, Rome. In 1955 Pope Pius XII revised the ritual and inserted it into the Mass. Since then, the rite is celebrated after the homily that follows the reading of the Gospel account of how Jesus washed the feet of his twelve apostles. Some persons who have been selected usually twelve, but the Roman Missal does not specify the number are led to chairs prepared in a suitable place. The priest goes to each end, with the help of the ministers, pours water over each one's feet and dries them. There are some advocates of restricting this ritual to clergy or at least men. In a notable break from the 1955 norms, Pope Francis washed the feet of two women and Muslims at a juvenile detention center in Rome 2013. In 2016 it was announced that the Roman Missal had been revised to permit women to have their feet washed on Monday Thursday. Previously it permitted only males to do so. In 2016 Catholic priests around the world washed both women's and men's feet on Holy Thursday. Their gesture of humility represented to many the progress of inclusion in the Catholic Church. Biblical Reference History At one time, most of the European monarchs also performed the washing of feet in their royal courts on Monday Thursday, a practice continued by the Austro-Hungarian Emperor and the King of Spain up to the beginning of the 20th century. In 1181 Roger de Moulins, Grand Master of the Knights Hospitaller issued a statute declaring, in Lent every Saturday, they are accustomed to celebrate Monda for thirteen poor persons, and to wash their feet, and to give to each a shirt and new breeches and new shoes, and to three chaplains, or to three clerics out of the thirteen, three deniers and to each of the others, two deniers. Catholic Practice Eastern Christian Practice Eastern Orthodox and Byzantine Catholic Oriental Orthodox Protestant Practice The Eastern Orthodox and Eastern Catholic Churches practice the ritual of the washing of feet on Holy and Great Thursday according to their ancient rites. The service may be performed either by a bishop, washing the feet of twelve priests, 
or by an human washing the feet of twelve members of the brotherhood of his monastery. The ceremony takes place at the end of the Divine Liturgy. After Holy Communion, and before the dismissal, the brethren all go in procession to the place where the washing of feet is to take place. After a psalm and some troaria and ectenia is recited, and the bishop or abbot reads a prayer. Then the deacon reads the account in the Gospel of John, while the clergy perform the roles of Christ and his apostles as each action is chanted by the deacon. The deacon stops when the dialogue between Jesus and Peter begins. The senior ranking clergyman among those whose feet are being washed speaks the words of Peter, and the bishop or abbot speaks the words of Jesus. Then the bishop or abbot himself concludes the reading of the gospel, after which he says another prayer and sprinkles all of those present with the water that was used for the foot washing. The procession then returns to the church and the final dismissal is given as normal. Foot washing rites are also observed in the Oriental Orthodox churches on Monda Thursday. Anabaptist Practice In the Coptic Orthodox Church the service is performed by the parish priest. He blesses the water for the foot washing with the cross, just as he would for blessing holy water and he washes the feet of the entire congregation. In the Syrian Orthodox Church, this service is performed by a bishop or priest. There will be some twelve selected men, both priests and the lay people, and the bishop or priest will wash and kiss the feet of those twelve men. It is not merely a dramatization of the past event. Further it is a prayer where the whole congregation prays to wash and cleanse them of their sins. Foot washing is observed by numerous Protestant and Proto-Protestant groups, including Seventh-day Adventist, Pentecostal, and Pietistic groups, some Anabaptists, and several types of Southern Baptists. Foot washing rites are also practiced by many Anglican, Lutheran, and Methodist churches, whereby foot washing is most often experienced in connection with Monday Thursday services and, sometimes, at ordination services where the bishop may wash the feet of those who are to be ordained. Though history shows that foot washing has at times been practiced in connection with baptism, and at times as a separate occasion, by far its most common practice has been in connection with the Lord's Supper service. The Moravian Church practiced foot washing until 1818. There has been some revival of the practice as other liturgical churches have also rediscovered the practice. The observance of washing the saints' feet is quite varied, but a typical service follows the partaking of unleavened bread and wine. Deacons place pans of water in front of pews that have been arranged for the service. The men and women participate in separate groups, men washing men's feet and women washing women's feet. Each member of the congregation takes a turn washing the feet of another member. Each foot is placed one at a time into the basin of water, is washed by cupping the hand and pouring water over the foot and is dried with a long towel girded around the waist of the member performing the washing. Most of these services appear to be quite moving to the participants. Among groups that do not observe foot washing as an ordinance or rite, the example of Jesus is usually held to be symbolic and didactic. Among these groups, foot washing is nevertheless sometimes literally practiced. First. Some reserve it to be a practice of hospitality or a work of necessity. Secondly, some present it as a dramatic lesson acted out in front of the congregation. Groups descending from the 1708 Schwarzenau Brethren, such as the Grace Brethren, Church of the Brethren, Brethren Church, Old German Baptist Brethren, and the Dunkard Brethren regularly practice foot washing as one of three ordinances that compose their love feast, 
the others being the Eucharist and a fellowship meal. Historically related groups such as the Amish and most Mennonites also wash feet, tracing the practice to the 1632 Dordrecht Confession of Faith. For members, this practice promotes humility towards and care for others, resulting in a higher egalitarianism among members. Many Baptists observe the literal washing of feet as a third ordinance. The communion and foot washing service is practiced regularly by members of the separate Baptists in Christ, General Association of Baptists, Free Will Baptists, Primitive Baptists, Union Baptists, Old Regular Baptist, Christian Baptist Church of God, and Brethren in Christ. Feet washing is also practiced as a third ordinance by many Southern Baptists, General Baptists, and Independent Baptists. Baptist Practice In the mid-1830s, Joseph Smith introduced the original Temple Rites of the Latter-day Saint movement in Kirtland, Ohio, which primarily involved foot washing, followed by speaking in tongues and visions. This foot washing took place exclusively among men, and was based upon the Old and New Testament. After Joseph Smith was initiated into the first three degrees of Freemasonry, this was adapted into the whole body endowment ritual more similar to contemporary Mormon practice, which is nearly identical to Masonic temple rites, and does not specifically involve the feet. In 1843, Smith included a foot-washing element in the faith's second anointing ceremony in which elite married couples are anointed as heavenly monarchs and priests. The True Jesus Church includes foot-washing as a scriptural sacrament based on John 13, 11. Like the other two sacraments, namely Baptism and the Lord's Supper, Members of the Church believe that foot washing imparts salvific grace to the recipient in this case, to have a part with Christ. Others Most Church of God denominations also include foot washing in their Passover ceremony as instructed by Jesus in John 13, 1-11. Most Seventh-day Adventist congregations schedule an opportunity for foot washing preceding each quarterly communion service. As with their open communion, all believers in attendance, not just members or pastors, are invited to share in the washing of feet with another, men with men, women with women, and frequently, spouse with spouse. This service is alternatively called the Ordinance of Foot Washing or the Ordinance of Humility. Its primary purpose is to renew the cleansing that only comes from Christ, but secondarily to seek and celebrate reconciliation with another member before communion slash the Lord's Supper. Progressive Judaism Notes a number of Jewish rabbis who disagree with the initiation custom of Brit Mila, or circumcision of a male baby, instead have offered Brit Shalom, or a multi-part naming ceremony which eschews circumcision. One portion of the ritual, Brit Rishitsa, involves the washing of the baby's feet. See also